Hello, welcome back. It's getting towards that time of year again and the laser cutter is in full Christmas swing and I've been thinking about doing a, a little overview video for anybody thinking about purchasing one of these. Uh, the, the power control, um, it originally comes with this sort of thing um, which is next to useless. It's not completely useless but it is getting on towards useless. Um, I did first of all put a this analog milliamp meter in um, so I could at least see what power I what current was putting through the tube and made sure I wasn't overdriving it um, because that's a, a really common problem with these things if you, you if you haven't got this you are flying blind on the with your power settings so um, that's, a, that's a definite must. This panel I just made up once you, you've got it kind of up and running, you'll then find that your first use for your laser cutter is to make bits for your laser cutter. Right, after you've got a current meter fitted, so you, you know how much power you're actually running the thing at, um, you'll probably be looking at changing out the bed. They come with some really bizarre little clamp type arrangement which just hold, it's almost about, I think it's about three or four inch. Things and it's for some sort of block printing, but uh, yeah. Anyway, get rid of that. Um, you can get a bed in there just over A4 size. Um, this I just welded up some aluminium section and then just put some of this sort of expanded mesh, aluminium mesh on, which is not ideal because what you really want is like the honeycomb stuff. Uh, this has got too much of a surface area, sort of still that the beam can hit and reflect back off and that's why you get these little bits here. Cooling, I'm just using a reservoir at the moment um, which during the winter and if you're only doing small runs of stuff and that seems to hold it fine. I did look into getting a chiller um, but to get a proper chiller, um, one with a, like a refrigeration base one you're looking at probably sort of 600 quid's worth so that's kind of it wouldn't make sense at the moment something that may be a possibility uh, is to get a, a domestic dehumidifier um, small unit you know sort of thing you pick up for 100 pounds and see if it's possible to separate the evaporator and condenser coils out um, and use that to chill the water um, but yeah, I mean that would be a whole other project. I keep a little temperature gauge there um, for the reservoir and then there's another one up here which is kind of on the outlet of the water from the laser tube itself. Um, that's, so sort of keep an eye on things. Um, what I've got, I haven't rigged in yet and this is almost a year on, is a, a flow sensor. Um, for the coolant so literally I just have to check every time that it's actually um, it, there is actually coolant going through there because you can kill your laser tube pretty quickly otherwise um, yeah a few mixed reaction is something you're gonna have to contend with if you're gonna have one of these machines um, I'm currently running it's an 80 watt centrifugal fan that's a hell of a lot better than what I had before, which was just like a domestic bathroom four inch mixed flow fan. Um, not like a really cheap one, but it's reasonable. It just didn't, it still really didn't have enough. Uh, it couldn't create enough pressure. Um, you need something centrifugal um, to do it. And the machine did actually come with a, an extract fan unit itself, but that, that wasn't great. So, I mean, I just save yourself the hassle and cut straight to one of these. So, hidden away underneath there, that's the little air assist pump. Um, it's just a very small kind of um, aquarium type thing. I was using a piece of free software called um, K40 Whisperer, which worked with the original board which came with it, and actually, that worked okay. You know, it, it wasn't bad. Um, it's uh, certainly a lot better than the software that comes through with it. It's just some weird sort of hacked old version of Coral Draw, just like you've probably heard elsewhere. I just don't even bother installing it, just throw it away. 
at some point you're probably going to think about changing your control board. I've upgraded this one to a Cohesion 3D, uh, which sits kind of in there, um, which is kind of shielded for reasons that I'll go into in another video. Um, the good thing about that board is it then allows you to use light burn, which is a, a piece of software which is not particularly expensive, it's about 30 US dollars I think for the license, but it's just really kind of refined, well put together, um, definitely worth getting. Things like the drag chain here, um, you can, that's just carrying the uh, the airline for the air assist and just the, the power wires for the little diode pointer there. Um, that's, I think it's a 10mm by 15mm drag chain, and I've got about a metre of it, um, really cheap. Uh, I'm like anywhere that does like CNC stuff, um, yeah, that's, that's the kind of, that's, you're going to need a, some of that if you put in the air assist and stuff on. You can actually get, um, for these machines, up, sort of upgraded optics almost. Um, it, this one's got, uh, I think, a 12mm lens and it's got uh, solid molybdenum mirrors which are just polished molybdenum. Uh, you can get, I think the gold plated mirrors are supposed to be slightly more efficient, but in my experience with a, an HPC 3020, which is, well, it is kind of like the same machine, um, those mirrors are very fragile and if you don't keep them clean all the time um, it's very easy to get stuff burned onto them and, and damage so uh, the cutting performance of this is better than we used to get from our old HPC which was a much more expensive machine and um, that had the sort of bigger that had the 18 mil lens on it and had gold plated mirrors and um, so yeah I'm not really in a rush to change the optics on this because they just seem to work as is um, but if anybody's got any ideas on that then um, please leave it in the comments below well I hope that's covered the basics uh, the next video I'll try and do one on upgrading to this cohesion 3d control board which I've got it in and I um, I did encounter a few kind of teething issues and annoyances along the way um, but I have actually got it to a stage where it's working quite happily now. Um, anyway, until the next time.